Hey everybody, Boris back with you, and today I want to go over the different weapons in the calling and, and what I rank them as far as how good they are, at least for my playstyle. Now this definitely isn't anything groundbreaking, it's been done many times before, but I thought I'd give my take just in case anyone cares. Uh, I'll go through some of the different weapons here and let you know which ones I think outclass the others and which class of weapons I think are the best. There are four different types of melee weapons in the calling. Um, and they have specific stats per type, so they, we have blades here that do bleed damage once they hit an opponent. There are spears, which shred armor, so definitely something that can be useful later in the match when people have armor. It shreds the armor away. And then over here, we have the bludgeons, which cripple the opponents, so it makes it harder for them to run away. Also slows their movement even when they're maneuvering and trying to fight, so that's definitely a useful uh, useful stat on a weapon and then you have axes which put an expose mark on the opponent basically telling you what extra percent of damage is going to be taken by that opponent while they have that expose on them um, so I'll get into that once I start going through the weapons here but first I'd also mention there's a tier 1 tier 2 a tier 3 and a tier 4 level of, of these different types of weapons and so we'll take that into consideration as we're going along. Some tier 1s from one class might be better than others, and some tier 2s from another class might be better than that first set of, uh, set of weapons. So I'll go through them. Let me cut the video here, and then I'm going to kind of break them down. I'll throw the tier 1s, tier 2s, 3s, and 4s all around this room so that we can go through them one by one. So here laying in front of me, we have all the tier 1 weapons in the game. And I have them rated from worst to best, and I'll go through them one by one and let you know why I think they're the worst and why I think they're the best. So, right here we have the hammer. If you look at the stats in the bottom right, it says a cripple of 5%. Now, if you compare that to another bludgeon in this category, like the brass knuckles or the tomfa, those do a cripple of 10%. So that's double the cripple um, and the same amount of damage. So I'll pick these up here. You can see. 5 to 15 damage, 4 to 12 throw, but it has double the cripple compared to the hammer. Same thing for the brass knuckle. So, by far, that is the worst bludgeon weapon in, in the game, and the worst tier 1 weapon. Um, simply because it has the least amount of damage, or the least amount of uh, special statistic on it, out of all the tier 1 weapons. Now the next weapon that I think uh, isn't that great is the pitchfork, and that's simply because early on you're not going to run into a lot of players that have armor straight away. They might prioritize that and craft it, but it's very rare to see when you see your first opponent that they'll have armor on. So this special shred, 2-6 to six on armor, is not really going to help you um, early on in the match, and hopefully by mid-game or late game you've upgraded this and you have some kind of different tier weapon. But as far as tier 1 goes, this is definitely not that great, but I do rate it above the hammer, just because... What the fuck? <laughs> okay. Well, I do, I do rate that pitchfork that just went flying across the room better than the hammer, probably because of how gracefully it just ran over there, but um, it reaches a little bit farther than the, than the hammer, and it, like I said, it has a little bit uh, higher statistics. Alright, so next, I'm going to look at these two, and this is about a tie for me, um, mainly because I use blades quite a bit, and I actually run a perk specifically specifically for the blades, uh, so the machete is pretty decent, but like, I, like the hammer, it has a weaker uh, extra statistic on it, as it does 0.6 bleed per second, and it is a slow weapon, so it takes longer to charge up a hit, um, which also is a negative against it. So if I can't find, you know, one of these higher ones, I'll definitely go for this machete. But if I have my choice between the machete and all these others, I, th I think I'm going to pick uh, some of these. So the next would be the hatchet. Camp hatchet. It does slightly less damage than the others, but it has that 10% exposed. So if you hit somebody, just even with a short hit, they'll have a little um, expose added to them to where the next hit you do will do 10% more, da more damage. So if you're doing a full charge, that's going to be 15.4 instead of 14. Um, and then every time you hit them, it keeps that 10% expose on them. 
and so you're just you're gonna keep dealing hopefully if you're in a fight you're gonna keep dealing that extra 10% damage that you wouldn't get on some of these so I do like the hatchet a little bit better than the machete especially if I'm not running a blade specific perk and then we have the brass knuckles and the tomfa now the brass knuckles much like the hammer damage wise but it does have that 10% cripple, and that can be important early on because players are going to be running away from you, especially if you're winning the fight. And early on, you really don't want to be chasing somebody around because more than likely they're going to run you into another opponent and you're going to have to fight off uh, two people. And at the very least, you're going to have to worry about getting vultured right at the end. Um, even if you kill that player, the next player is going to be right around the corner and, and you're going to be weak from that fight. A cripple... On tier 1, I think is definitely a plus, because you're going to keep people from running away. If you hit them one time, they run 10% slower than you do, and so you can catch up to them and close the gap and take them down. Now the Tomfa, I rate a little bit higher just because it has a little bit more reach than the Brass Knuckles, simply because the Brass Knuckles are tied to your hand. This has a little bit more reach to it, so you can get uh, those hits in just a little bit better. But by far... The best tier 1 weapon in the game is this Tonto Knife. It does one less damage than, than the rest of these, but it has a one bleed per second. Even if you hit them with a short hit, they're going to be bleeding one per second, so you, this, this fully charged hit of 14 can easily turn into a 20 damage hit, um, no question. And even if they back off after they've been hit and they're blocking, they're taking that bleed damage the entire time, and they're, you're going to definitely benefit from that, and you will win way more fights with this weapon than you will any of these other tier 1 weapons, even that jumping pitchfork over there. Okay, now on to tier 2. Now you might be seeing a constant theme throughout, um, we'll see once we get to tier 3 and tier 4, but the tier 2 weapons are going to be pretty similar to what the tier 1 rankings were. We're going to prioritize speed, as well as the special statistic that each weapon has when we're going over this. So let's start off over here with the pike. Now it's a spear, so it's going to remove armor. And it does pretty good damage, but it is it seems like it is a slower weapon compared to another spear in this category. I still don't rate spears that high on tier 2 just because still you might find one of these. You're going to find one of these in a crate, a green crate most likely, unless you have a specific airdrop for it and a uh, mid-game airdrop, but um, if you're going to go for a spear on tier 2, you're going to want this next one, the javelin, um, before this pike, because it is slower. And it disappeared. These, these spears are uh, really causing us trouble. <laughs> Alright, so next we have the steel pipe, and you can see down there that it is slow. It does have a 10% cripple. But so do these tier 1 weapons, um, so it's not really an upgrade there, but it does a little bit more damage, but like I said, it is slow. It takes longer to do the fully charged hit, and that could make the difference when you're you know, in a close fight with somebody. And then next we have the Ice Axe, which it does do a decent amount of damage, 17 for a full charged hit, and a 10% expose. No more than the Camp Hatchet, but it does more damage. Nothing really special here. Now we have the Saber which does more damage than the Tonto Knife or the Machete, but it still has that 0.6 bleed per second, which isn't that great, especially since you're upgrading to a Tier 2 weapon. If I have my choice between this and the Tonto Knife, I'm going to stick with the Tonto Knife simply because of that bleed. Because if I hit somebody with a hit, fully charged hit of 14 with the Tonto, and they back off for 4 or 5 seconds, every time I hit them, I'm going to be getting that one one bleed and that's 0.4 that's 40 percent more than the saber so i think that outweighs the three damage on a full hit or one damage on a on a quick hit so i'm going to take the tanto even over this saber but for the sake of these weapons i still prefer a bleed over this 10 percent expose or even this slow weapon with the cripple now the javelin is the second spear in this category and it, you can see it has that fast uh, attribute to it. It does really high throw damage of 21 so if you're running um, golden arm you'll get three of these in your airdrop and that's really useful for throwing these things. You can get 21 damage plus whatever extra damage you get. Now I think I've just lost the javelin again. 
Um, but it was a fast weapon, so it does hit super fast. And that can make the difference between life and death when you're fighting, especially uh, early game or mid game. Next, if I can pick these up, we have the cleaver, which does a 20% expose. So you can see it definitely outclasses this ice axe with a 10% expose. Even though it does one less damage, it does that 10% extra expose. So every time you hit, you're going to be getting 20% instead of 10% extra onto each hit. So I definitely rate this as one of the higher tier 2 weapons for sure. You'll be lucky if you find this in a green crate. And then the crowbar has that same 10% cripple as the pipe, but you can see it has that fast attribute on it. And I might actually call this a tie between the cleaver and the crowbar. Either way, you're going to be happy with these. The only benefit is this has fast, and so it hits much faster. Um, you can see it's a little slower to hit here. And it's the fully charged hit is really where you see the difference. Uh, the, the crowbar really outclasses it as far as hitting the fully charged hit. And then last but not least, we have the Kukri, which is a blade. No surprise that it is the best because it has that same bleed as the Tonto Knife, one per second, but it does more damage than the Tonto Knife. So you, if you find this, definitely trade out your Tonto Knife and sell it. You'll be getting two more damage per fully charged hit and the same amount of bleed. Definitely the best, in my opinion, the best tier two weapon in the game, regardless of whatever perk you have. If you have specific perks for axes or bludgeons or spears, then you might want to run with those. But if you are just leaving the perks alone, not running a specific weapon one, I think the Kukri is the best tier two weapon.